so yeah, this is a picture of our um, group who met at Butterfly Alley on Sunday. We had a nice crowd there. Carrie Cryer gave us a tour of the garden, and then we did some seed collecting. First, we'll talk about things we're doing out in the community, our outreach. Um, we attended the National Night. These are things since our last meeting in July. So in August, we attended the National Night Out at University Park. We were there alongside Chesapeake Natives and Nurture Natives, and we had a great time there, a nice crowd up near um, the University of Maryland. And we did the North Beach Bug Fest on August 10th. Um, Wild Ones was there along with Xerxes Society, and um, that was a fun day. Lots of kids came, lots of families. And then we were we do field trips and garden tours. Um, this couple weekends ago, Karen Molinis of the Maryland Native Plant Society did a field trip at the um, at a park in Calvert County on Gray's Road that was attended by a few of us. She did a little bit of dichotomous keying out in the field and also a little bit of binaturalist training. And again, we went to Butterfly Alley. Just a few pictures of our tour there. Um, a lot of focus was on the um, shrubs and the trees there, in addition to her lovely um, perennial gardens. And we've, we're doing some work in the native on native gardens out in the community. We have helped to install two native gardens at the St. Mary's Animal Adoption and Rescue Center. Their nice. gardens were pretty barren, overrun with weeds, and um, they had a few plants in the ground. Um, but we helped them um, weed it, remulch it, and then put lots of plants in that were mostly obtained from Butterfly Alley. And that's a joint project of Wild Ones Chesapeake Bay, the Friends of St. Clements Bay, and the St. Mary's Garden Club. And then two projects in Anna, oh, and Master Gardener, St. Mary's, St. Mary's Master Gardeners, excuse me. And then um, two gardens in Anne Arundel County. And next we have a new park at going in in Leonardtown and Amy Henderson is one of our um, chapter members. She's the land steward for that project. So Amy, you're on and I, I see you're on. So if you'd like to give us an update on this project that you're about to start. Sure. Um, you can, the top left picture just gives a, pic, a view of the little park and it's next from the street and the sidewalk and it's next to an alley that has a mural um, and so we're going to put in a pollinator garden um, carrie career from Butter butterfly alley hired a landscape designer and donated his services to come up with a plan and um so we've got a butterfly milkweed asters green and gold Carrick, Samsonia, Penstemon, and some other things going in. We're going to leave a few of the shrubs that are already there, but it's right now it's got a lot of Nandina, Liriope, and uh, I'm hoping we can bring butterflies to Leonardtown. Um, so we're going to begin our installation on Tuesday, October 8th. Um, and that we're getting some middle school students from Bay Montessori School are going to come and help us put those plants in. I hope that it's not rock hard. I'm hoping this rain will keep, <laughs> will loosen up the soil a little bit for us. Um, and um, other volunteers are welcome. If you're local to St. Mary's County and Leonardtown and want to come and help, we'd love to have you. Um, so those, those are just the pictures are of what it looks like now. We're hoping to the landscape company that takes care of the town flower beds is supposed to come and take out the Nandina and the Liriope at the base of the trees and um, make room for us to put in our native plants. And then I've got on, on the slide, Marlene put that on there, that eventually I'd love to see uh, Leonardtown become a pollinator pathway. That'll be the next, like another level up. Um, we have our native plant garden at the Leonardtown Library. And this garden will be, it's about a mile, I guess, from the library. And uh, it just would be awesome to see people's homes and, and the businesses along that corridor from the library over to town to, for everybody to 
put something in their landscape that would help the pollinators. So we'll see, but this will be a, a stepping stone to that. All right, let's see what we've got next. We've got, oh, education. So we've been trying to get out there in the public to do some presentations. Um, I worked with Nurture Natives in August to do a Biodiversity and Native Gardening 101 presentation in Charlotte Hall. I was at the College of Southern Maryland in La Plata giving their staff some education on seed saving. Um, we did seed saving at the Lexington Park Library. And most recently, we did a virtual presentation in um, cooperation with Wild Ones Greater Baltimore um, on collecting and saving native seeds. And that um, recording is ready and up on our YouTube channel. So we'll be sharing that through social media. And I'll also email that and the resources out to everyone. And we're doing plant propagation at the USGSB lab. I think we've grown about 2,000 plants, yeah. plus Bill says our first fruckful came home with us last week, and they will be going with us to our native plant swap, which is this Saturday at Akakik. And we'll talk more about that when we get to our featured events that are coming up. But this has been a lot of fun this summer. Um, we've gained a few members from being up there, um, folks who share our passion. And it's been a lot of fun. We're already collecting seeds at the Bee Lab for sowing next winter. Um, oh, so a few national updates, just real quick. Um, there was questions in the earlier chat about um, certifying your habitat. Wild Ones National does have a certification um, that you can do online to certify your garden for a fee of $50. And this is the um, habitat sign that they have. So if you're interested in that, check that out. I do believe we've had one or two in our um, chapter already. I think Pam Brumbley did her garden, and I can't remember who the other one was. But um, you can click the QR code on this slide, and it'll take you to the um, page on the website. And then I just also wanted to mention to anybody who's working in education, like perhaps with schools, um, Community groups, I think, are also eligible, nonprofits, nature centers. Um, if Lisa's on, this might be of interest to Lisa. I don't know, Amy, if you work with any school groups, but the Lori Seeds for Education grants are open. And we did have two winners in the chapter last year, Nurture Natives um, won, and they're putting in a garden at the East John Youth Center in Lesby. And Pam Brumbley, one of our members, also won a grant, and she used it at um, Help me out, Lynn, which National which, um, Colonial Farms. National Colonial Farms. And she will have information on that at our plant swap, I believe, on Saturday. Mm -hmm. So I just wanted to put the word out there for folks who may have access to schools, nonprofits, youth organizations, community youth centers who would qualify for this. It does not fund vegetable gardens, but applications are open through November 15th. And then um, there is another Wild Ones um, national webinar. They've been doing a good job recently of having well-known national speakers. October 24th is Matrix Landscape Design with Benjamin Vogt. So if you scan this QR code, it will take you to the page on the Wild Ones site. Um, but that should be a good um, webinar. And I believe the re and just again, a reminder that we're on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, and you can always email us to get in touch with us, but please follow us on social media. Keep an eye. We're trying to get more information out on our website. And then this was more for, I know we had quite a few non-members who were on, so I did want to <clears throat> invite non-members if you were interested in joining, whether it be our chapter or another chapter. Um, all of the Wild Ones chapters are nonprofits that depend on membership dues and donations um, to do all the things we're doing out in the community. Um, our work depends on you. 